video is a makeover video and it is of my garden shed. It's actually part of a paid project with Wix over on my Instagram, but I thought that you guys might like a longer form video of the whole makeover here on my YouTube. So my shed has seen better days. It's a pretty big eyesore in my garden. It's pretty weather beaten, seriously rotten but the thing is because I live in a rented property and I don't have access to the loft I do store a great deal in my shed and so it was really important to me to give it a good makeover that makes it more watertight and also a little bit more attractive to look at so I'm going to be doing a bit of a um, cosmetic makeover but as well as a structural makeover as well and there will be a part two to the makeover where I deal with the inside and some more detail elements. So as you can see, it's pretty scruffy. Down the side of it, the planting is such a mess. I'm not the best gardener, but it's just, everything's looking a bit ratty. The grass grows around the shed, sort of all tatty. Um, the boards that are on the top of the shed, they are rotten. The screws are coming out. The door hangs off wonky. It's got splits in it. I mean, the list literally goes on, guys. To be honest, it would be better to just rip it down and put a brand new shed there. But you know me, I like to try and reuse what's there and make it better. And so that's what I'm going to do. So as you can see, I've already done some repairs. I actually found some extra feather boards in the back of the shed. And so I've taken out some of the really badly water damaged feather boards and replaced them just to help the shed be more watertight. As part of this makeover though, I will be doing some more repairs especially inside this is where <laughs> can you believe it the floor is so trashed I think because the door of the shed didn't shut properly rain has just been consistently coming in and the whole floor has rotted this is a huge job I need to do this job before I do anything else cosmetic on the shed Inside wise, the structure is fine. It stands up pretty well. The roof is fine, but the floor is one of the biggest things I need to deal with. And one of the things I'm gonna deal with first. So one of the first things I did was cut out all the rotten wood in the floor. I used my jigsaw, obviously avoiding any of the joists, and I just tried to make the hole in the floor a little bit neater and to get rid of any of the wood that was really, really rotten. So then I flattened out the soil and actually dug a hole so that I could embed a brick which I could then balance a long batten of wood on and this is just going to create an extra support for the shed and it's going to make this area of floor that I repair just that little bit more sturdy and it'll give me something to drill into. I'm actually using to repair this lots of offcuts of wood including parts of the bed that I dismantled in my spare room. I do like to reuse all of my materials. Then I'm just going to create a new little floor for that hole using just some MDF cut to size and screwed into that new joist. The next thing I did was actually applied a damp membrane. I wanted to stop water getting into the shed and everything becoming damp. So I bought damp proof membrane um, from the hardware store and I just laid it down and stapled it around the edges. So this has gone on top of the original floor and that little repair. Then what I'm going to do is lay a whole new floor on top. I'm just gonna use ply, which I'm gonna cut down to size. And all it took was three boards with just the ends lopped off basically, laid in there. And then I'm using screws straight into those wooden joists to hold the whole floor down. I'm just doing this quite rough and finding the joists um, with my finger, not particularly accurate, but as long as your screws are going into something uh, wooden underneath, then the floor will be nice and secure. Good morning, good morning. It is the next day. So I got loads on yesterday. I'm really happy. Got that floor done. That was one of the biggest jobs. It really was quite trashed. 
Um, it's really solid now. I'm really happy with it. Um, and um, I got that plywood off Facebook Marketplace, so I actually did it pretty cheaply. So today's job, I'm actually going to paint the inside of my shed. So as I said at the beginning, this is a collaboration with Wix over on my Instagram. So a lot of the materials came as part of the collaboration. Uh, it's all to make a reel over on Instagram, but I thought you guys might want to see like a longer version of the make over here. So on Instagram, it's going to be like instantaneous like that, but I'm going to paint the inside this color called Willow. Coupinoles, garden shades uh, for garden wood. Uh, yeah, I really liked the idea of a colour inside and then a different colour outside. I'm going to use my new sprayer, my Wagner paint sprayer. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of what you do with the paint sprayer, but if you are interested in how to use the paint sprayer, it's a fairly new tool for me. Uh, I was gifted it. Um, uh, but yeah, if you're interested in how you go about sort of filling it, I'm still getting the hang of it, but I would definitely include more detail in another video if you're interested in that. Um, but yeah, so that's the job today. Fill up the sprayer with the paint, uh, protect the floor. I'm going to leave the floor probably the colour it is, um, just wood. Um, I don't know. We'll see. See how much time I've got. Um, but yeah, I'm going to spray all the inside, cover up the window, spray the inside. And then I've got to go off and um, I'm looking after my friend's kid today. <laughs> I'm really not that child friendly, but um, I am sure I will entertain her thoroughly. Um, so yeah, so I've only got time to do sort of a quick job and then I'll, hopefully I'll come back this afternoon and carry on. So yeah, let's get the paint sprayer filled up and then get spraying. I'm excited to see some colour in there. I think it'll be great. So I actually gave the inside of my shed two coats of paint with the sprayer. Now I'm actually going to remove the existing trim on the roof. It's very rotten and to be honest really messy so I'm just going to unscrew that the whole way along. I'm then going to trim down the felt roof just so it's a little bit neater for when I replace the battens and I'm also going to remove all the side battens. Several of them were um, rotten and also had breaks in them, the nails in them had gone so I've removed them on both sides I'm actually going to replace them completely. So I'm using feather boards from Wix. Uh, I actually measured and worked out that I could do this top trim using one 150mm um, feather board so it was super cheap to do. I'm going to cut it in half with a bit of an angle. I'm also pre-painting some of my trim. This means it just makes it weatherproof because some of the timber I've bought is not weatherproof timbered. Then I gave the whole shed a light sand just to help when it comes to painting and helps the garden paint adhere to the already painted shed. Heidi, hello! So, it is the next day. I feel like I got a bit done yesterday. Got all my battens measured uh, to replace down the sides and I got the top bit. I don't even know what you call that bit, but I got that cut. And then I pre-painted them because some of that wood is not um, wood that's treated for outside, but that paint I've got is outside paint. So I've given the sides that are actually gonna be on the inside two coats of that paint to protect them from like water damage and then once I've attached them when I paint the whole shed the other sides will get a coat but yeah today's job is to attach those um it's also I think to detach the door and do some work on the door and also take out the window and um clean it and put some new battening in in the window and then obviously the final job well not the final job but the final job for the shed will be to paint the shed as well so yeah lots to do today but it's a lovely mild day today perfect for doing garden stuff so let's as they say get cracking so i'm pre-drilling the holes for the batten and also using my countersink bit to create countersink for the screws so that the screws all lie nice and flush and then i can just fill them with a bit of filler and then screwing that into place 
For the side batten, I actually pre-drilled this and pre-counter sunk drilled it and again just screwed it in and the screws are nice and flush with it. I put several along so it holds the roof felt in really, really tight and also just make sure it's on there properly. Then I added the front piece that I'd made so I had to cut it with a mitre cut so that the two sits at a point up at the top and all I'm going to do is just tap this in with a couple of nails. Then once it's in position I am going to add a couple of screws into it into a wood joists behind just to make sure that it's up there nice and strong. I didn't worry too much that the two mitre joints didn't join fully because I'm actually going to make a little diamond out of the leftover feather board to place in the middle as I saw some images of sheds on Pinterest that had this diamond and thought my shed would look really nice with one. Then I went round and filled all of the screw holes just with a bit of normal exterior filler and when that's all dry, I'll be able to start painting all of that. So my next job is to sort out this window. This window is such a mess. It's basically a piece of perspex that's held in with some bent back nails. I want it to look a lot neater. I'm gonna make a little frame, but first of all, I'm gonna pop this perspex out so that I can clean it and I can glue anything that needs gluing or repairing around the window frame. So I'm just gonna bend those nails back and pop the window out. As you can see, I've got my AirPods in. I pretty much listen to podcasts the entire time that I'm DIYing. Next job, I took the door off. It's time to fix the door. The door is such a mess. It's rotten in so many places. I took the hardware off and kind of assessed the damage and as I said this shed could do with replacing completely and definitely the door could. As you can see at the bottom it's rotten, it's wonky but I gave the whole thing a sand, I filled any of the really really bad cracks, I actually used my um, circular saw to cut the door off at the bottom a bit straighter so it looked a bit neater and got rid of any of the rotten edges. Meanwhile, while the filler is drying in the door, I'm actually going to paint up these little decking tiles. These are actually from Wix. They were £4 each and they just click together. And I've given these a light sand with my palm sander. And then I'm applying my fence paint from my garden makeover video, which is in the colour charcoal grey. I'm going to give them a coat of that. And when the first coat's dry, I'm going to give them a second coat. Okay, so here is the door with all the filler. As you can see, I would say it's probably 90% filler now and 10% wood. But hopefully when it's all sanded down and painted, it will look a hell of a lot better. So one of the things I didn't film, and I'm so sorry, was me applying the new window frame. I used basic curved edge beading from Wix, which I cut to size with my mitre saw around all four sides of the window. And then I made a little cross beam piece using a flatter um, piece of trim, which I then put one piece straight across and then cut two pieces to slot in the top and the bottom. And I literally glued all this in place. I then used some cork to fill uh, any gaps and then I'm going to paint it exactly the same colour as the shed. Okay, so next up is the general paint on the outside and I'm gonna be using the Cuprinol Garden Shades again. So the first color that I used inside was a green. This is called Natural Stone and it's kind of, I would say, like a warm beigey gray. Um, and I thought it'd be really, really nice to sort of, it'll match in with the gray of my fences, but also add a little bit of brightness and slight warmth to my garden. 
It obviously is gonna take more coats to go over a shed that's already painted. I actually did three coats of paint in total on the outside. I used a big wide brush, but I also used a smaller brush for some of the finer areas like the trim on the window and the sort of upper trim and just to make sure that I'd got in all the nooks and crannies because this paint is what weatherproofs your shed. So it's really important to get really good coats on there. I painted the whole way around even the back that's against the fence. It's a bit of a time consuming job, but it's definitely worth it. So yeah, a good three coats if you want it to be really vibrant and really hard wearing. I also obviously gave the door a paint as well. I'm actually doing something a little bit different with the door. So I'm painting the front of the door the same color as the outside, so the natural stone. But the other side of the door, I'm actually painting green like the inside of the shed. And I think it's gonna look really, really cool, just that flash of color when you open the door. But the door is looking so much better already, even with just one coat of paint on. But again, I gave it three. Okay, now to tackle this messy area around the shed, I decided that I wanted to create a little decking gravel area to add my pots, but also to dig out the grass that's at the front of the shed as it's forever growing and then I can't open the door of my shed. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't have the correct garden tools here. It would be much better to have had a much bigger spade, but I managed it. I managed to dig out down the side of my shed and also down the front. I then went back to my door once the other side had dried and painted the inside colour. As you can see, I'm doing it that lovely green colour that's on the inside of my shed. It's called Willow. So then I'm using some of the damp membrane that I actually used in the floor of my shed and I'm actually going to use it as a bit of a weed membrane. So I've laid it down but I have drilled holes in it to allow for drainage and this is what I'm going to place all of my gravel on. So I flattened out the troughs that I have um, cut out by hand and I've then placed the damp proof membrane down, created the holes and now I'm just laying my white gravel which again is from Wix. You might also notice that the shed floor is a different colour. So in a little break that I had while everything was drying, I decided to slap some of the dark charcoal fence paint on the floor. I did it with a ceiling roller, super quick, super easy. I just did two little coats of it, let it sink into the ply, just to give it a little bit of colour. Nothing too perfect because I'm gonna shove a load of garden stuff in there so it doesn't have to be immaculate, but I do think it's just made it look that little bit neater and tied it in with the rest of the garden. So one of the big things I'm going to do is change the hardware on the shed. All the hardware was pretty trashed and I fancied having some new lovely hardware. So I got this as part of my Wix collaboration. It's their lovely matte black hardware. So I've got door hinges, I've got a new padlock to um, bolt to go on there and a new little latch to go on the bottom. And yeah, it was super easy to put these on. They came with all the screws and the fixings. And I just think these are gonna be a really nice contrast against the lightness of the shed. Then I moved on to the other side of my little bedding area. So I'm laying some of that damp proof membrane down again. I've already drilled the holes into it to create for drainage. And I'm just gonna make sure that it's all nice and flat. Then I'm gonna apply these decking tiles. Now, because nobody's walking on these, you don't have to worry too much about what goes underneath. So all I did was compacted the soil nice and firm, and then you just click these decking tiles together. They're so easy, four pound each from Wix, so an absolute bargain. And then I'm gonna fill the channel either side with the white gravel. So when I got round to filling the gravel, I realised that I didn't have anything to sort of stop the gravel from heading into the soil in the underneath area. So I decided I need to create a little barrier. So I had a little bit of extra wood. I keep wood from everything. And I had a little bit of extra wood, which I stained the same colour. And I dug out a little trough for it and tapped it in uh, with a hammer just to create a little ledge. There's Gus. A little ledge and then I can fill the gravel in and the gravel's not gonna head into my flower beds every time the dog goes on there or it's windy or anything like that. And that's it, it's finished. I am so happy with it, guys. It looks a million dollars and don't get me wrong, it was a lot of hard work. Um, but totally worth it. So I'm loving the new roof piece. My little diamond I made looks 
brilliant. The black hardware just really pops on that really nice natural stone colour. Um, all the hardware is great, it means my um, shed is now really secure, the door shuts properly so I won't have to worry about water getting in there, I can now padlock it really securely as well. As you can see I've got my little gravel channel there so I shouldn't ever have a problem trying to open the door again and it just makes it look a bit neater. Around the side I've got my little decking tiles and I've just placed some of my pots on there and I just think it looks just a little bit smarter and it just means that my pots aren't just stood on soil, it just makes it look a little bit like it's a designated pot area. I need to get another plant I think for there but at the moment I'm super happy with it and that window has just transformed the shed I think it's one of my favorite bits as well as just the color generally I think this little bit of beading it probably only cost a few pounds to do has just made it look that little bit more special and all the side trim as well I think it just looks neater it looks fresher it looks like a whole new shed inside you've got that lovely flash of green it's not painted that neatly but I really didn't worry about getting it on the roof. All I wanted was a nice flash of colour inside and also that helps weatherproof inside and protect it from damp. Got the brand new floor, which is just that slight grey colour. And the door has come out fabulous. I'm so, so pleased with it. That colour on the inside, I think just looks lovely. It's a really nice little flash of green when you open up the shed. And Gus seems to like it. He's happy to sit next to the new shed, now it's not such an eyesore. And yeah, it's kind of inspired me to move on to some other areas of the garden. I know you guys loved my general garden makeover. I'm definitely going to be doing some more stuff in the garden next month, so do stay tuned. Let me know what you think in the comments. Give the video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And of course, do subscribe to see part two of the makeover and to see my future makeovers too. Thanks so much for watching, bye.